All right, today we're going to build a confidence interval, uh, simple flow through model, 90-95 and 99%. Uh, the, what I'm using here, the, the data set I'm using here is linked below if you need it. Um, we can literally pick anything we want here. Um, let's see. Oh, I'm going to delete this. I don't need this. But we'll have uh, and delete this. And I'm just going to use the one fan graphs leaderboard here. All right, we're going to open up two more sheets. We'll build them in separate sheets just to keep things clean. Um, so let's pick home runs. So this is baseball data. I'm just going to copy the home runs column over here into sheet one. And then uh, we'll do a second one. Um, what else do we want to play with? Uh, we'll just do RBI. Things with nice round hole numbers are the best. So, um, oh, control Z, control C, there we go. Uh, paste it into sheet two so we can replicate the model once we have it done. Okay, so I'm just going to uh, start here on home runs. Uh, we can build it down at the bottom we want. Uh, or we can just hit control down and figure out we, we got to go down to 957. Uh, either way is fine. Uh, and then the things we need are the average, standard deviation, and N we just said was 956. Okay, so if it goes down to 957, there's 956 numbers because home run is not a number. Um, and then we can do equals average. Go over here to A2, control shift down or we can type it in uh, equals STDEV A2 colon A957 okay so those are the pieces we need you can put as many decimals as you want here all those fun things okay um, and then we're gonna build our confidence interval so like I said we're gonna do uh, 90, 95, and 99 Make sure you're putting the percent there or putting them as 0 0.9, 0 0.95, 0.99. We need them in decimal form. Either way, we'll get there. And then we're going to need the low end of the interval and the high end. And then we just plug in the math. Um, so on the low end, it's always minus. So we're going to start with X bars. We need the average. And I'm going to go ahead and lock that because it's going to stay the same for all of them. I'm going to minus. Uh, we need our T statistic, which is done through the TINV formula. Probability is 1 minus C8. So I'm going to take 1 minus 90%. This is why you need decimal form or it'll be wrong. It won't be able to calculate. And then when I, I'm going to let this float. I'm not going to lock this because when I drag it down, I want it to do 95 and then 99. Uh, comet says degrees of freedom. Degrees of freedom is N minus 1. I'm going to lock N because N isn't going to change. Minus 1. And then <clears throat> we multiply the T statistic by... Uh, the standard deviation over the square root of n, right? So s over the square root of n. So here's standard deviation locked over square root of n. Also locked. And that's it. Okay, so there's the math. Hit enter. It's going to calculate the low end. Uh, you can drag this down if you want, uh, and it'll fill in the 95 and 99% level. Uh, drag it over and it's going to get messed up so our floating reference here that was C8 is now D8 so it's looking at this and you, you take 1 minus 4 and you have a problem so it doesn't like that so we're going to move our reference that we left floating back to C and then on the high side we want to add instead of subtract okay so we just switch those two things hit enter and then drag down and again we can kind of pretty it up if we want but the main thing is this now works um, exactly how we want. So there's uh, our 90, 95, and 99% confidence intervals for uh, home runs. Okay. Uh, and so uh, the nice thing is once once we have one model, we can replicate it. If you're replicating it across sheets, you don't even have to mess with um, uh, these uh, dollar signs, right? So if we did it within sheet, so we could build intervals down below this whole set for RBI, like we could build uh, one down here. Uh, but then when we pulled it over to another one, uh, the locked references would stay locked and we'd have to re-wire uh, them. So not a huge deal, not hard to do, but, but uh, can be a little bit of work. So all we have to do is uh, uh, we know that we pulled this 
and then we pulled this second one, RBI, uh, will also go down to the same thing, 957, because they the, they're all pulled from the same number of players. Uh, so if I just copy this model uh, into sheet 2 in the same exact spot, I have to drop it starting in C3. So if I copy this model into C3, it'll update, and now it's for RBIs instead of home runs. Okay, so it's, it's still going to reference the right things, A2 to A957, has the same number, should pull all those over fine. So now we have two models, so now we have the confidence intervals for, for both of the things. Okay? Uh, and that's pretty much how you build a confidence interval. Um, <clears throat> again, you don't always have to build all three in my class, I know we do, um, but if you just want a 90% confidence interval model, you don't need to put all of uh, this up here, you can just plug them in. Uh, you can even, instead of putting uh, D3 here, right, you could just do equals uh, average A2 to A957. So you could just build low and high um, that way if you wanted to, and it would give you the same answers. Uh, the reason I do it this way is if we want to mess with anything. So if you get more data, you can update um, you know, now we have 1,050 uh, with the same averages. It'll update these, or if the average changed, we can change it. So this is why we build models in Excel with these input um, parameters, is that then we can change them as we need to to get uh, what the new answer is. Okay, so this is a real basic flow-through model, um, <clears throat> and uh, we'll be building these in class. So um, thanks for watching.